Greetings, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This is the day the Lord has made. One more time, into the breach, he asks us to go. We do. Because of him, not because of us. Set your will to be the desire of the Lord. And you will have no um, untoward experiences as we have when it's where we want to go. A lot of times where we want to go, however, is something the Lord put in us to go there. It's part of our DNA, part of the way we were created. I oftentimes think of that in terms of the... uh, desire I have for nature, whether it's the ocean or whether it's the uh, vast expanse of uh, New Mexico and the high desert, and they're both kind of similar to me, the, uh, the high desert and the, uh, and the ocean and the sea. When I look over the high desert, I look beyond to the mesas and the plains beyond, what I see is an ocean. And when I see the way the light plays with the desert at 7,000 feet and how uh, gorgeous and intense and magical it is, then of course I feel very close to God. And that's, I guess, what attracts people to the desert. In your, there's a feeling of solitude But then there's a feeling of being connected through the the beauty and awe of of his creation. And we've been through about everything lately. We've been through um, a tremendous amount of, uh, like almost like a frat level, uh, a frat party on steroids in in, uh, the White House and and, uh, just about every lame thing and, and scandal you can imagine seems to be the, uh, you know, it's the, it's the stuff of the unwise, right? It's the stuff of the incompetent. It's the stuff of the uh, uh, unfruitful. It's the stuff of the idle rich. It's the stuff of um, the kinds of mistakes are the, are the you know, is, it's, it's really um, when someone doesn't really have a vested interest, when someone really doesn't care, they're just there for their own, vanity and when they are not there to serve you know the people but are there as a uh, some kind of royalty to serve themselves you know you're going to expect that of course they will allow scandals because they um, they don't care if there's a scandal because you're not going to do anything about it and a lot of this has to do with the fact that you won't react so they will keep on taking just like the bully at the playground uh, they're very vindictive, uh, but they're bo- they're cowards, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a good punch in the nose to the bully on the playground, and you would see their whole house of cards tumble. Why isn't there even one doing that? Besides those of us little people out here with our our podcasts and things like that, we'll speak truth to power daily. The reason is is because people are afraid of Satan, not necessarily them. That's right, you heard me. That's exactly what the reason is. And I think, you know, to, to, to see it otherwise would be, to be, would be to render oneself a fool. And I know we don't want to do that. So as I'm looking now down through the, uh, down through the ages, and uh, I, I'm aware that I have crickets in my home who all night are... Uh, basically um, continuing in their serenade. <laughs> and it's the strangest thing. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. But in this, I feel like reading this to you. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not ever been or ever be like neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. 
Now, the reason I'm reading this is because it reminded me, I saw it yesterday. It's, a, you know, the obvious. So Old Testament, Joel 2, um, uh, verse 2. Now, you have to understand, um, when you look at America, you see a blessing like the people of Israel, you know. You see that there was a people that, that none had been before us, and none, surely none will come after that will have the, uh, the greatness of this country. And I just, have to, I just have to preface everything by saying, if you don't know that you live in a great country, you have no perspective in history. This, this is extraordinary. This is beyond, beyond imagination. This is unheard of for thousands of years of civilizations coming and going. This was unique. And it says here, and I'm sorry to have to prophesy out of the Bible like this, but it says, a great people and a strong, there had never, never ever been, uh, been the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So life continues on on the planet. And let me just say a note here that, you know, it seemed that ever since America was established, you've had these idle rich and descendants of royalty and others launching a war indefinitely, 24 hours a day through all manner of means, through deception, infiltration, all kinds of means and overt uh, squandering of our blood and treasure as you just saw with Iraq and on and on and on and on in order to destroy, a zeal to destroy this. What these people are, well, we gotta really point out, they want to destroy a people that is free. Uh, they want to stamp the light out and give darkness. They want to put people in chains around the world as they've always had. They want to maintain control. And to do this, they want to subjugate you to slavery, which they have done. And I suppose we are slaves at this point. We have been conquered now. So they have succeeded. But who are they? Why do they want to see humanity in chains so the very few of them? I mean, if you ever woke up out there, it would be over for them. But you won't wake up, will you? You will not. You will not wake up. You will do what you're told. So they win. But I just want you to know whom you serve. I don't serve them. I serve my Lord Jesus Christ. And my status proves it. I don't know many other Christians with, um, that I can say have an actual status. I do. And I have a record. And they don't. So that I don't, I don't invite them to my home. I would rather invite an atheist to my home. And I would convince him, of course, that the reason he's an atheist is because of people like that that I wouldn't invite. It's a hard reality to swallow, but it's the truth. It seems the traitors, which this country is filled with, know the status of every individual in their community and around, you know, the nation. And they may not talk, they may nod and wink about it, but they know the status. You know, they know who's in, who's out, who's hot, who's not. They know who's up, who's down. They, they know the, 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 you know, the big invisible um, game show thing. They know who is winning, who's not, who needs to enslave themselves more to get something else, who is being crushed right now, who's up, who's down, who's hot, who's not. Okay, so they have a chart. In, it's in another dimension, but they have a chart. And from that, they can then see who's who and what's what. And then they keep their mouths shut. Friends, these are cowards and these are traitors. They're traitors to you. They're traitors to me, they're traitors of humanity, and they're cowards. They're no different from the slave masters, the few elites who are seeking to control the globe for whatever reason, because they're, they're fools, obviously, because there's nothing controlling anything. We are free. You're only enslaved if you believe you are, and then you give them your power. They have willingly given their power over, the, you know, a, a preponderance of people, and then they complain endlessly, and many of them are in conspiracy blog sites complaining about the Rockefellers or the 
whatever, you know, the families of the Illuminati, which of course is an oxymoron in terms, there's no such thing. No, never have. When you say Illuminati and the families of the Illuminati right there, I know it's, it's a psyop, right? There's no such thing as the Illuminati, period. You know, that's just a conspiracy theory term to be kind of a catch-all of anything that secret societies or, you know, uh, high-level masonry or whatever it is, you know, the, 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 the warmongers of the earth. Anyway, they're evil. They worship Satan literally and structurally. And uh, this would be the heads of the institutions and the, you know, you know, the, the, you, you've got, you know, who's the status of various people. Like you have the Pope, for example, he's got a certain status. He has a signature that you can easily discern and see, right? Just like Obama has a signature, like, <clears throat> you know, the um, certain other people have a signature. Now, that doesn't have to remain permanent. But you can see when one has a signature and one does not, Yes. It doesn't take, it's not rocket science. It's just, you know, put it this way, it's like a vibe, you know. You, you know it when you see it, when you encounter it. Right? When they walk into the room, all the, the candles blow out. You know, the lights dim. Right? A darkness comes over. You know what I'm talking about? Because if you don't, you should not listen to this podcast. Because we're not going to talk, we're not going back to kindergarten. We're going to just go, you know, forward in assuming the cosmos and the multidimensional cosmos. So we're going to keep describing what we see as just plain fact. Because I know that you share the same uh, vision. I may use a little different metaphor than you, but, you know, we're talking about the same thing. There's no point for me to go back and say, gee whiz, folks, there really is a kind of conspiracy. And, you know, these things are like sometimes shapeshifters. And the, you know, why do we want to go back to kindergarten every day? Because that's kindergarten level. We need to go beyond and enter in and describe what's being seen as Ezekiel did. Now, that's basically being an adult. Not going back and going, well, it really does exist, folks. I'm not going back there. You want that kind of podcast? They're all over the internet. Go ahead. So we're not going to go back and establish the assumptions. We've done that. We have a track record. Of, I mean, we, I, have a track record of doing it. So now we move forward. Okay? Um, you wouldn't have this result in your churches and in your nation unless the preponderance of people had given up their souls uh, for whatever reason a and con are constituted as traitors. They are cowards and traitors. Most of them gave it up because they were afraid of being harassed. They didn't want persecution. They were Christians not wanting to be persecuted. That was the main group. So they formed a 501c3 church where you could, you know, do, do your own thing, uh, be uh, broken through to the other side, you know, be darkness on steroids, and then you could go in there once a week and get and have a feeling of being cleansed. So you could live in denial, play a game, and figure, okay, well, that'll take care of it. You know, no matter what Zeph says, I'm saved. Oh, yeah? Um, not according to the Bible, you're not. Uh, you can profess anything with your lips, but if your heart doesn't believe it, meaning you, you wouldn't be a traitor, right? If your heart believe that Jesus is the sovereign, the king of kings, you would not need to um, worry about what the world thought of you one way or the other. So that's the litmus test to find out if you truly have faith and if you are saved. Sadly, uh, the majority of people that call themselves Christians are not saved according to the definition in the Bible and the definition Jesus gave us of being saved. It's really simple. It's got nothing to do with being rich or poor. It has got nothing to do with... Uh, it has to do with a position, a soul position, intact or not. The first thing that happens to a person when they um, are converted, let's say, to a traitor, that is, uh, is basically their soul is scalped and another one inserted that controls them. You know, that's the, the perfectly possessed is... The late Father Malachi Martin called it on the Art Bell show. He, he called it perfectly. The, the, the uh, perfectly possessed. 
And he said that was the majority of people that, you know, are living in upper middle class and middle class, you know, the, the well-to-do, right? Um, High-heeled, as they say in, in the UK, uh, you know, who's your daddy? Is he rich like me? You know, that group. They don't have souls. They, ha they think they do. <laughs> they have their ego and a kind of a form of a soul. But th there's another thing that was inserted at that point, at the point of a uh, sale. And that thing that was inserted is uh, not them, but is, it w eventually takes over so that they, that entity, can then have a life. That's the whole point of uh, making us, as d our DNA, as fit extensions so that they can take over, possess us, and then live. So they can't live without us giving it up to them. And they will, they will promise us trinkets and plaques on the wall and riches and whatever else, houses and I don't know what, what else people, they run after yachts and all kinds of things. Anyway, they promise all that. But what they really want is just to, once they get a hold of you, of course, they don't have to um, live up to those promises because Satan is a liar, right? And that's the kingdom. So they manipulate the DNA of human to make a human a fit extension for them. They break you down in, 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 uh, in socializing people. They, they make this the agenda so that the rite of passage into adulthood means giving up your soul. Then they take over and then they, they you know, you take your place in society. They live you don't, and they go on and have their um, communities and their children, and then they do the same thing to their children. Now, I'm just looking at it almost like an anthropologist at this point from another planet, because that's how I feel. I watch this almost in disbelief, as this is, is a social custom. It's part of the socialization process of becoming a valid human, that is, you're possessed. And um, that's why you see the, uh, the chaos and the hilarious uh, scandal and the, just the, the buffoonery of uh, the United States, uh, whether it's the Pentagon uh, and their in, inane and idiotic military policies, uh, playing every end against the middle, you know, hoping that, you know, something sticks, uh, you know, looking to make money. That's the bottom line. The Pentagon is there at the pleasure of the, uh, the, the well-to-do, the people that control the money. And the whole point of the Pentagon is to uh, work for that money. So that's what they do. And the rest of them are just a joke and a fiasco because they reflect the actual preponderance of people in the United States. So one must not look in horror at, uh, you know, the, the nation has been conquered in a sense. And um, I will say this, if people wake up, uh, it's, you can't just wake up. You can't, you, you can't wake up and reject Jesus. Okay. That'd be, then you're not woken up because you don't understand the multidimensional level of Christ, what it really is. It's really you in a sense as well. You see what I mean? You have to wake up to understand you. You could call it whatever you want. You don't have to say Christ. You know, there's, there is the, uh, the gospel story, which is, uh, is the, the most amazing story, and the, but, but you have to be shown that, you know, and then, then it makes sense, and then you cry, and then you, you be, you're humbled to your knees, and, 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 and so, you know, a whole Holy Spirit comes over you, and, you know, that's what a lot of us would call the baptism by fire, okay, where you really come to understand the sacrifice of God, and that's what Christ is, you know, the Son of God and God are one. You, the Son of God and God, are one. So you see it, it uh, the differentiation between people, things, and places, and, and, um, and, and ideas is ridiculous. It's only one. And I think even the New Agers say there's only one, but, but then they try to, they make it two and three and four uh, while they say it's one. So they're very disingenuous, of course. Um, because, you know, their daddy's a liar, the father of it. They, they're still going by the Ascendant Masters, which are just devils, you know, disguised as angels of light. And they don't get it that basically the whole treacherous game of the world is to enslave people, to be fit extensions. I love that, that, that research that uh, various people have done the last, you know, say five, ten years on that, where the genetic makeup of human is, is and the overall 
cultural society and civilization is geared toward this entering into this uh, covenant with darkness at, in exchange to be able to live. And I mean, that's the way it's put. So nobody really thinks you can live in Christ. People don't really believe that you can live, that, that Jesus will separate you and then you can just get on with it without being just thrown to the curb and being some kind of a bum with a plaque and waving it on the street. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm, but you know what? I support the bums with the plaques. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what people are afraid of, right? So they, um, they have no idea that the Lord could make uh, a way for people. Now, the only way you can find out if he can make a way for you is for you to trust him and not man or the doctrines of man or man's interpretation of the Bible or anything else, but to trust, you know, this Lord, this God, to, like Abraham did, to guide you through um, your life. And when you really see Christ, when you really are awakened and anointed, when you really are, you know, you, you've, you've come into a, your spiritual understanding that you're a spirit uh, going through a physical experience, which is temporary. When you understand that, and which is, should be basic, but you'd be surprised how many people don't quite get that. They, they don't believe their souls. They just think they're a body with wants and needs, and they go around eating and chewing up the scenery, and that's basically the majority of people. I don't know how we became so spiritually inept, but I think the reason we became spiritually dumb as a, as a, as a people, as a civilization, is so that they would have an easier time um, getting what they want. They meaning the kingdom that controls this earth, temporarily, of course. The false paradigm that if you go to them, they'll take care of you. Well, really, they'll just enslave you. It's even a requirement of churches that you be a slave first, and then you can have Jesus. Which, of course, is an oxymoron, makes no sense at all, but I mean, that's the way it is. I found that to be true in every church I visited. I did not find even one exception. Even in my own home Bible study, we had um, infiltrators and had to stop it. Even in, seriously, and, and, and if they could have gotten the upper hand, they would have taken over. You know, in fact... We're putting on this Bible study, and 100% of the people taking part in it, and this was back, you know, years ago, 100% of the people taking part in it were false. <laughs> we're playing a game uh, against me and Trish. And, you know, I, I was like, yeah, and as I look back through time, 100% of the people we encountered did the same thing. We really didn't encounter anyone in the, when you say Jesus, when you say Bible, you say Bible study, our record is 100% false. Who would attend? Uh, and I, to that, I would say, well, that's really something, you know, we, we just came to this planet and we dropped in here and, and look what we found, Lord. So that became the subject of much prayer. And of course, I've just kept on you know, I've just kept on the path uh, over the years, you know, and uh, and I have found it to be, like you say, a lonely path, but a, but a good path, you know, a path that, uh, you know, we're always running into brothers and sisters here and there that are for real, and then they have their lives, we have ours, we pass, and then we come back and we see them again, and that's all, that's what the Lord intended. He never intended us to chokehold each other in some kind of a, a stranglehold uh, 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 you know, uh, just fellowship, I guess I could say, a stranglehold fellowship so that we strangle each other every week and we chew on each other and bite each other and, 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 and get sick with each other, you know, meaning enslaved. Why can't we just let the other guy be free so we can be free? Why can't we let him go where he wants rather than instructing him that he has to do this or that? Why can't we instruct a younger brother to, uh, to become more sensitive to the spiritual realm and then tell him that's your home 
heed that and you'll, you shall be free and you'll be instructed. Just like that's how we get our instruction. Why should we, you know, get our instruction and then tell the next guy what our instruction is when he or she needs to have their own instruction? You know, I trust God enough to lead our people to him in the end, you know, where he wants to lead us. <clears throat> I, I don't feel that I have to rescue other people. Oh, sure, there's people that need intervention and intervention prayer and all that, and we do that, but I'm saying, I, you know, and, and they, they need help in many, many different ways, but that's not what I mean. I'm not talking about that. That's basic, you know, being a good human, right? You, you help the other guy out. But, uh, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this control issue. And I know a lot of you out there have control issues, and let me explain what's going to happen to you. If you don't voluntarily give up that control, it's going to, you know, you're going to be a very miserable person because you can't control the universe and you can't control your friends and you can't control the outcome of, you know, your job or your, um, your girlfriend or, you know, what you think is going to happen uh, the next day and the next day and then, you know, because every day is a new day and every day is a new dimension. Every day is a different hologram and we live in a hologram. Therefore, anything is, it's like... Wednesday, anything can happen day at Disneyland, right? With, with the Disney kids, anything can happen day. I'm every, that's every Wednesday. Well, guess what? Every day and every, every moment is an anything can happen day because we live in a holographic um, world and therefore anything is possible at any time. So expect change, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I don't buy too much into the whole new world order thing because, um, you know, I've been shown that it doesn't exist, so... I don't really deal with it. You know, I mean, uh, I know what I know what the the Satanists want. They they have always wanted for thousands of years to enslave humanity, get control, and then you know use them as fit extensions so that they these are beings from other dimensions. They can't they can't you know to to put it into kind of scientific terms, they can't manifest here. They can't live here because the frequency they're at is too fast. Okay, but they're there. You know, they're there. They get in your phone lines. They get in your electricity. You know, they're there. Though they try to possess objects too, you know, even rocks and trees and things in order to hang. But what they really want is what they worked on is to get a human and to, you know, just like in the movie K-Pax, it's identical. Uh, that, that was a perfect movie about demonic possession because uh, the being that, uh, uh, Prote or whatever, that took over Kevin Spacey, uh, in the, in the movie Cape. If you haven't seen it, I urge you to go get a copy of it and take a look at it. But anyway, <laughs> it's interesting. You can't find it. Yeah, I know. Because that's something they don't want you to know. Because the big hole in the plot, there is no physical being. The, the, he says, I come from another universe. Oh, yeah? Well, what, are you invisible there? Because you don't have a body, so you have to possess this body in order to then live here? Don't you find that interesting, folks, that the alien from another planet doesn't have, I mean, they're, they are, is invisible? Hello? What are they talking about in K-Pax? He says he's an alien, but he's taken over the body of a guy who wanted to commit suicide, you know, and had a broken life. And so just at the verge of his giving up his life, the the, the alien jumps in and takes over and suddenly... Life is wonderful, and he has supernatural powers now. What am I looking at, folks? Structurally, what am I looking at? That's right. I'm looking at uh, that movie as being an allegory of uh, life on Earth for all people. And um, this, this demonic entity was being heralded as some kind of a savior because he had powers to heal people and help people. It was like... Yeah, just let the let this alien force in and it would save humanity. But see, the, the kicker in that is, but the actual character played by Kevin Spacey was gone. And one might ask the question for K-Pax people, where the hell did that guy go? I mean, this entity from this other planet, ha ha ha, uh, lives, right? And is taken over the body and is having a splendid life. What happened to the original owner? And that's just a microcosm of what happens to every single being on earth. In other words, that, that proposition is put to every being on earth, unfortunately. 
And Jesus, in order to rescue you, keeps you from that reality. But your friends and family will viciously turn on you because they are part of that reality. Most are. And that reality leads to the destruction of civilization and humanity, which is the secret real game the devil is playing. He really wants to take the genetic material, you know, in other words, being able to manifest in bodies here on Earth. And uh, But at the same time, he doesn't want to... Um, uh, he wants to destroy or get rid of the original souls that occupied the bodies. That's why the souls are scalped at, you know, usually around 16 years old, they scalp them, right? To prepare them, to socialize them uh, for, you know, being slaves in the workforce, you know, to, to taking their part in civilization. And then they call it a rite of passage. And then I would ask, what happened to my childhood friend that I knew? Because you ever had go to a reunion and you realize there's only like one or two people there that are actually intact. The rest of them are like programmed. You know, they're not who they were when you knew them in school. And in fact, they don't even remember a lot of stuff that you remember very well. Isn't that weird? What happens to people? It's sad. So you see, the, the thing that we're speaking of today is very urgent. You know, they have set it up to make it look like civilization is this this soul exchange, if you will. This moving out of the way so that one of them can take over and then have your body and have their life while you're just kicked, kicked to the curb. Or they say that some what they some of them do is put you in a box. You know, I mean, we've heard all kinds of talk and speculation about it. You know, aliens, alien quote, alien slash demon, you know, same thing. So that they put your soul in a box and they, they abduct you and possess you and then they have children and then they possess them and they, they're, they're basically, what are they doing? It's animal husbandry, isn't it? They are fostering further generations that they can, um, so they can live. They are like a cattle farm, but, but the point is not to eat the beef, but to possess, to, to enter in. So the vessels that are made, they're, you know, in other words, these, these souls come in as bodies, humans, which are marvelously made. And then they manipulate it in order to be able to move the, the human soul out of the way so they can enter in and they can have their life. People say, well, how could the Pope, you know, eat children? Yeah, it's going around right now. I, mean, I saw a report about, you know, child murders, the Vatican and, you know, ritual, ritual. Yeah, they, they eat. Uh, in satanic rituals, they eat children. They don't just kill them. That would be a waste. <laughs> so um, how could that happen? And it's because, well, you know, because of what I'm saying. This particular civilization or this particular force that, that runs the world um, somehow thrives on, uh, you know, all, kind, all manner of horror, including that. Because if you don't sacrifice children to them, you know, then they'll... I guess, take you out or something. But it's an ancient thing. It goes way back. It's a sacrificial cults are ancient. These are ancient things. And um, they're run by demonic, you know, by beings in another dimension who basically demand uh, sacrifice to them, the gods, in exchange for a wonderful life here. And isn't it a wonderful life, folks? Now, I mentioned the Pope. I mean, I, again, I, I you know, I'm not, accusing anyone of anything. I just say the Pope because it's a high office or the president because it's a high office or, you know, people in elite status, you know, that are Satanists, they tend to, you know, have their rituals and sacrifices on certain dates and times and they watch times and, and they have a numerologist and they have um, certain occult things. There's a whole other world too that they live in that's the, the, the realm of... Um, the fourth, fifth, sixth dimension that they get to go to, they go back, they go to and fro in between there. But they are not really human anymore. They're more like hybrids because they don't, um, they don't have a human soul. That it's another entity using that 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 body, and that's what the majority of humans are enslaved to. It's really not you're not enslaved to this dimension. It's really a higher dimension. And um, but I'm going to ask you, where is your soul? Dude, like, where's my soul? 
And the answer is, well, I don't know, but you, you better get it back. Because every moment that ticks by is a moment that you're not in possession of your soul. In other words, you've, 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 you've given up uh, um, your soul in exchange for the world, which is the proposition put to humanity, and humanity stupidly goes along with it. Um, which um, one of the level of stupidity I've seen here, say in the United States, and the the people that I mean, people are like zombies here. They don't even know what's going on. They don't. They don't know who the president. Is. They don't know. Uh, you talk about Iraq. They don't know what happened in Iraq. They they don't know anything because they're not, they're living lives that are not their own. Dude, where's your soul? Uh, it's like, well, I'm here. No, that's an ego. Something's running you. And I know they try to run me. They try to run everybody. They, 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 they whisper in your ear, you're no good. You're this, you're that. And torture you because they want you to finally give up and say, okay, uncle, okay, take over. I give up. Just like the being in k that gave up because his life was too hard, too traumatic. Things happened to him. So he gave up and this thing took over. And guess what? Then he had a beautiful life. But it wasn't him who was enjoying his life. It was the alien from another planet that took over his body that is enjoying the life. Capisce? Are we making ourselves perfectly clear here? There's no onus on you for having resisted that. They're going to try to play a mind game with you to make you feel like a piece of you know what, like a loser, when in fact you're the winner, but you don't see. You're still running the race. The, all your friends and everybody else, they gave up. But will you stay the course? And, and to do that, you have to, you know, you go it alone. You take the scourge of, of, of your friends and family. That's called persecution. They don't persecute you for nothing. They don't persecute you when you say, I believe in Jesus. That doesn't bring any persecution. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus brings no, no persecution whatsoever. The Chinese, hey, you Chinese, you Chinese? You Chinese brothers and sisters, you were praying for America to be persecuted. Guess what? Your prayers were answered because they knew that the church couldn't be revived here unless there was persecution, which there wasn't back when they started praying for, for us. You remember? No, people don't remember. I mean, who am I talking to? Don't you remember that? That was famous, famous story that, that, that I guess you missed. They were praying for us because we had become decadent and the only way to revive the church here, to have a, a remnant, if you will, of, of strong faith, strong, you know, super knowing who you are faith, you know, just really strong, would be that persecution sharpens your faith. Without it, you can't really have faith. You don't need it, for one thing. So, you know, so now we have Christians, veterans who are Christians, constitutionals, libertarians, all that, you know, people with Christian ideals even, you know, but people that would be patriotic, loyal, all those good things would be <clears throat> even candidates to become Jesus' own, if, you know, if we could do it without the Christian, commercial Christian scourge on it. Anyway, all these people now become uh, targets because... You know, for the simple fact that they are see themselves as individuals, which is the first reason you get persecuted, and that they are uh, that they want freedom, which is another reason you get persecuted. Now, with Christ, the whole thing is there's a supernatural separation of you know you no longer when you know when you've completely given your life over to Jesus Christ. What happens is legally. You no longer owe the devil or your friends or your mother or your father or anyone anything. He's paid for you in blood. You are paid for. You couldn't afford it yourself. You know, you were guilty as charged of whatever crime, sins, whatever. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. But that was paid for too. That blood paid for everything. So now, okay, legally... You owe not a thing. You know, it's kind of like uh, people that like the sovereign citizen thing. If they hear you're a sovereign citizen, oh, you don't have to pay taxes or have a driver's license. We're going to throw your ass in jail. Persecution. You technically are that sovereign, 
but now you're going to be persecuted for what? And what is a sovereign citizen? Why do they need to be persecuted? Because they are, <clears throat> what are they? They're individuals. Okay, they're what God made. In other words, they're going to rebel against the system that basically enslaves in order for you to, uh, you know, whatever it is, be, be, have a life. Or you think that, you know, most people think that, but there's really no truth in it. But, I mean, people think that. that. That's the majority of what people think. That's why they do what they do. Out of fear and, uh, you know, of punishment and whatnot. And also, or greed, or both as a combination, or for any number of reasons. Peer pressure, family pressure, daddy pressure, mama pressure, whatever. Uh, they, uh, th they become part of society. But what they become part of is a collectivist uh, situation, not a... Uh, not a society of individuals uh, that, that cooperate through free will, but rather a <laughs> collection of slaves <clears throat> who cooperate because if they don't, they're going to get their heads bashed in. So Jesus liberates us from that, right? And so, but the church is there to further enslave while saying you have Jesus, so it's a mind control psyop. I mean, now that's what we're dealing with long and the short of it. I mean, it, I'm not trying to, say what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just saying, you know what? It is what it is. The truth is what it is. You know, most people don't even know there's other dimensions that, that are ruling over us. They don't know that the universe is a multiverse. They don't know that, uh, that consciousness comes before um, objects. They don't know that, you know, they don't understand that the will of God is in all things and, and is, is crafting this huge plan. They just feel like victims and they just want to be taken care of. And so they become slaves, which means they become zombies, which means the people that you knew in high school, they're no longer there. They haven't been there for a long time. Whatever lives is an alien being in a person, if you will. And that's what you're dealing with. There's been all kinds of people trying to alert the public to this, like Invasion of the Body Snatcher writers, you know, the people that wrote that original screenplay and, and if, if that came from a book or whatever, it came from a, a short story, whatever. Uh, they've been trying, the movie They Live, uh, John Carpenter was trying to alert uh, us, the public, of what's really going on. And these people are just patted on the head and treated like, you know, oh, B, you know, B movies, huh? B sci-fi, great. It's not going to make any impact. And indeed, they didn't make any impact. The, those movies only made impact on a, on a cult of people that are fans of that genre. But they're fans of the genre not realizing that sci-fi is one of the great uh, um, alarms that goes off about our future if we don't correct our, our present. I mean, that's basically the benefit of sci-fi. I saw a terrific movie... Uh, well, I saw the Tom Cruise movie, um, Oblivion, and that's a great, great movie because it jumps to the idea of machines running things and then people being enslaved to the machines. That's exactly what it is. So there was a great movie. And then uh, another one he was in called, uh, oh, I just forget, it's the recent one with Emily Blunt. It's, um, you know, it's, it doesn't really have anything to say about, you know, but it just has, you know, the idea of, uh, you know, fighting some kind of alien force or virus or whatever. And humans having a unique kind of, you know, built-in survival mechanism to, to, you know, try to thrive, try to survive, try not to become extinct. Um, if any man would have a plan that humans would become extinct, the, the law of equilibrium, i.e. God's will, will take them out. I repeat... Anyone or any group that has a plan for the elimination of humans will be taken out. And I say this as a prophetic warning right now, this moment, to the people responsible or, the, you know, you know who you are out there. If anyone wants to abrogate the creation of God, and, and you know, I would say abrogate yourself but don't put it on all the people. Anyone who thinks like that, that because they don't like themselves, they're going to apply it to all the people, will be taken out. 
not by, you know, me, not by some person walking along. When I say taken out, I mean through cosmic forces. Let me explain what taken out means. It means cosmic forces of a myriad of events will occur in that person's life, which will, will render him moot and unable to go forth with that plan, period. You do not interrupt God's plan. He did not make humans as an act of vanity. He intends to back us up. He will. Anyone that has a, a thought of launching a virus to wipe out all humans and for that matter, the rest of the genome and all matter, you know, uh, if they want to use the super collider to somehow um, go into the macro so far that they can then find the actual, um, you know, atom to destroy that could then possibly create a black hole in all of this. Oh, don't think they're not thinking that. I bring it up from time to time and people people accuse me of not knowing science and I'm like, um, I don't think you have to be a genius to understand why they put so much money in. They're trying to find the God particle through through collider physics. Um, I think I understand what's going on there, you know, at least as an overview. But more specifically, I understand that if possible, all these ideas, all these things like super colliders and all that, if they can be used as a as a weapon of some sort, they, they would be. And one of the goals, say, you know, ancient secret societies have is how do we eradicate matter and form? Seriously, if any man wants to eradicate matter and form, here's what happens to them. Um, a myriad of events happen in their individual lives that destroy them, period. Period. That's why you go, well, how come we're, we're still here? Because of that law that I just stated. Because what I just stated is why you're still here. It doesn't mean these idiot humans are going to, you know, still continue to figure a way out to trick God and destroy his creation, man, which, he, which is his future New Jerusalem, even though there's no future and past. Um, I'm saying it for purposes of, of, of earth talk and earthlings. Uh, but that is the, um, you, the, the, further to that, there's a law, there, there's a natural uh, law, but God is natural. I mean, natural law is God. Hello. Okay. So, for example, I had a cat and this cat loved one thing. He was like a zombie cat. He loved eating the brains of rabbits. He didn't eat the rest of the carcass. It was a waste. He just wanted to eat the brains. And rabbits have a pretty small brain. So, I mean, it's like all that killing of that big carcass just for that one little delicacy, but he was willing to do it. Well, he dragged him into the house, you know, and we'd find that rabbit there with the brains eaten. And, uh, you know, it was like getting to be a kind of off in time. And I, and I knew that he was going to be taken out because he was messing with a certain law. There is a there is an equilibrium here. There is a, a, a genome. There is a creation here. There are so many rabbits to so many coyotes to so much this to so many centipedes to so many spiders to so many to so many birds to so many uh, buzzards to so many. There, there's a there's a balance. He came in from outside this neighborhood, right? He wasn't born in this indigenous area because indeed he couldn't be because cats would be eaten up by the coyotes. And he started feasting on the, he started interrupting the food supplies. So natural law took him out. All we found, I think, was just a, a few tufts of fur. One day he was just taken. And, um, you know, the coyotes either took him or, or an owl took him, but whatever, he was just taken out. And the reason and that I knew at the time was because he messed with the, the balance. What he was doing was seeking to uh, change the equilibrium. So if anyone messes with that, it gets adjusted. It's natural law. It just gets adjusted. You ever wonder why there's so many rabbits feasting on the hill over here? I mean, you know, or in your neighborhood or whatever. The, the rabbits are out there when you have predators like coyotes. How could they be just walking around like that? Because of the very law I'm talking about. And you can apply the very same law to, hum to humanity. Even more so to humanity. Jesus taught us the very same thing in the Sermon on the Mount. He taught us the very same. What's the whole purpose of the Sermon on the Mount? Don't worry. 
the Lord is God, right? That's the whole purpose. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or wear. Or don't, don't, you know, do the right thing, all that stuff. But it's all about not worrying because look at the lilies of the field. Look at the birds in the air. Look at the rabbits and the coyotes and the lions and the lambs. And look at it. There are lions and there are lambs. Look at it. Would not God also protect you? So we read about Kurzweil and we read about uh, merging with machines or computers or bionic chips. And, and I have no doubt that people will, you know, do any manner of things to themselves uh, as a way of desperately and, and pathetically, by the way, uh, seeking to uh, live beyond the 100 and whatever, 100 years old, let's say, through bionics. And in fact, in the film Elysium, which is another sci-fi film that is also uh, another, you know, good use of sci-fi. I love sci-fi because it's just so, it's just so pertinent to what's going on. Usually it could really do a lot of good. Although people don't, you know, I don't think they're allowed to be educated anymore. When I was educated, we learned about simile and metaphor and allegory. And we learned about different stories, different plots. You know, we learned about kinds of stories and, and you know, short stories, long stories, allegories, you know, metaphors, um, you, you know, uh, we learned about all kinds of forms of dramatic writing, um, you know, Shakespeare and, and you know, and, and uh, Greek tragedy and consciousness and Carl Jung and, you know, uh, uh, who was that other guy? Joseph Campbell and, you know, myth and, and uh, you know, Greek mythology and, and uh, the, the Bible and the literature that was going along at that time, different philosophies that were the, the line of philosophers, Western thought, Western thinking, Western books, Eastern philosophy, Eastern books. Uh, I had all that as an education, you know, and uh, I, I guess I was really fortunate, you know, to have read so many books and, and to have been, most of the reading I did was on my own. You know, there's like a 10 year period there where I just, all I did was read and, and I read it all, pretty much everything. And uh, probably I should go back to it. It was just like a straight on the eyes, but I mean, you know, I was able to kind of understand, in a, in a sense, what 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 the what the problem was, which is that life just doesn't offer up what it promises in the beginning. We just don't really ever get it. In fact, we slip further and further into darkness as we get older, unless you're with the Lord. A caveat: unless you're with the Lord. Caveat: unless you're with. I mean, the caveat of, of meaning the caveat for this life, going it alone, going your own way or the way of collectivism, which is still your own way, um, is the, the caveat is that it, that it leads to um, sorrow before death, i.e. that life just doesn't deliver up what it promised in the beginning when you're young and strong and chasing the girls around or whatever you were doing and doing sports and, and, and you know, partying up and, and you, you know, the world was your oyster. I mean, you felt like you, anything was possible then, wasn't it? Rock and roll music was talking about all that. I mean, anything's possible with love. I mean, Satan. I mean, love. I mean, Satan. I mean, love. I mean, Satan. I mean, love. I mean, Satan. <laughs> hey, I saw this really amazing. Uh... No, it's cool. You know what I mean? I've, I've, you know, I've been on this path since I was, you know, since as far as I could remember. And, uh, I just don't see it as being a sorrowful path. I'm sorry. I just don't. I, I think people that go al go it alone in the world, for whatever reason, they're loners. And they, they, they're not really going to go with God. They're not going to go with the, the society. They're, they're just like that. I think there's, you know, that would be, if they can even survive, uh, um, then there'd be something really wrong with them. I would be afraid of a person like that. I saw the most surreal thing that I've seen, you know, something really bizarre. And that was uh, basically, um, I was watching the uh, Palladia, which, because I have a, uh, you know, I've got a uh, flat screen, you know, pretty nice. I guess it's about a 60, 60 incher. I'm not quite sure. 60, 65, maybe it's 65. And then, you know, a, a basic 7.1 surround with, you know, some pretty good speakers. Not... I've never, you know, felt the need to have an audiophile system or really uh, the one I bought right off the, you know, out of uh, Amazon. I put it all together myself and wired it up. It just 
sounds great. It's got a little, you know, something that anybody can really afford. Just great. And we've never really had to to do much to it. I, I'd like to deal with my outside. So I've got outside speakers too, but I never really figured out how to work those. But they are hooked up as well. And they were, that was all wired in before we got here, you know. So we take advantage of that. Plus we've got some uh, speakers up, some Bose kind of speakers up on the ceiling area that are part of the, you know, and then I've got another... You know, I, I, I was do it yourself kind of thing, but I mean, I, I when I watch music, I mean, it's like, who needs a concert? I crank this up, and it's just ever, it's better than a concert. And the cameras are right there, and I can see the the rock stars and what's on their faces. And so, I'm watching, and I'm, I'm first, I'm hearing Journey, remember, you know, the the '80s supergroup, right? And they were a great band and had some great songs. But it's live in the Philippines. And I see this little Filipino kid, um, you know, who's half the age, of, if not even less than that, of the original players who are all, you know, really, you know, uh, quite good. And, uh, you know, they're, they're still playing, you know, at that, that, that their age. But then there's this young guy, and you know, he's got the crowd kind of captivated. And he starts singing, and he sounds exactly like Steve Perry. I mean, it's like I look away and it is Steve Perry. It is so scary. It is frightening. I mean, I've never been so frightened in my life as when I saw them. And then I see Neil Sean, the guitar player. He's He's got a real problem nowadays. I mean, he's a great, you know, but it's really the Neil Sean show. It's not, I mean, the rest of the journey, forget about it. You know what I mean? It's really him just doing too many, too much lead guitar playing and it just gets boring, you know. And it's fine, you know, it's real flashy and, you know, and all that. But it's 80s, you know, it's 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 dated. So, uh, no offense, you know, I mean, he's a he's a virtuoso and, you know, and, and boy, doesn't he know it, you know what I'm saying? It's just every song he's out there doing leads when he doesn't have to. And it's like, nobody wants to see you. No one, ca- nobody cares about your leads. If they want to see leads like that and really, you know, they'll go see John Petrucci or whatever, the, you know, the Dream Theater and whatnot, and they can see all these, uh, you know, virtuosos who are beyond you. So, but anyway, that being said, this little guy was just exactly, I mean, and I've, I've got perfect pitch ears. I have ridiculous ears. I mean, just a gift from God. I didn't ask him for him. You know what I mean? That's why I mix, you know, I'm. Uh, I mix because I guess that's where I'm supposed to be. You know, that's where God led me into mixing, you know. I'm mixing all kinds of people. I just mixed a, a, a track with Trish singing, and, and it was a Rich Keltner track, and Trish, I didn't do one thing. All I did was mix and master because I got these these things on the side of my head, you know, that give me that ability. So that's kind of like, you know, that and maybe playing drums are two things I do well. But, hey, the bottom line is... Um, it fooled me, and my ears are pretty darn good. I looked away, and I and I was like, and I kept looking back, and then Neil Sean was going on, you know, the 18 millionth guitar lead of, of the night, and, um, you know, I'm, again, he's great, but it just, it just, you know, it's just like, it's not fair to the rest of the band, you know, but anyway, never mind, you know, you know, need to, you know, bands work best when they're, when they're all, when everybody's kind of contributing, you know, and no one person steals the show. But it was almost like to make up for the fact that it wasn't Steve Perry, I think, there was this overcompensation on Neil Sean's part playing lead. And I'm just, you know, speculating here. But this kid was so good at imitating Steve Perry. I don't know who he is as an individual, but it fooled yours truly. I mean, I, when I wasn't looking at the screen, I thought it was old, you know, you know some 1980s, uh, you know, track or video that they were playing. Nope. Live from the Philippines. And this kid is a Filipino. So that he's playing to an audience that can relate to him and he's running around and, and the rest of the... It's bizarre. The, the, there's these, the band is made up of old white guys, right? Over the hill sort of white guys, right? Who still all play good. I mean, you know, you can play till you... You can play indefinitely. There's no, there's no end to it. You keep growing in your playing and, and, until you die. You really can. But... Um, uh, and then this this guy, this young kid, running around being exactly like Steve Perry, even having this straight hair and uh, just a number of things that that uh, was similar. And then playing in the Philippines in Manila, which made it even more surreal. 
And I thought, am I the only one that's, I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm cutting away from the podcast. You know, I told you a bunch of stuff and a bunch of good things, especially the law of equilibrium, which is God's law. All the laws the physicists discover are God's laws, but they haven't figured out the one that prevents them from destroying humanity. They're God, and I'm not saying physicists are doing it, but you know what I mean. There's, a, there's all kinds of, it's God's law. There's a, there's a certain law. No, people can destroy other people and, and have wars and terrible thing. You can lose vast numbers of population. Other civilizations have gone to the wayside, but there's this thing about humanity, nature, for what they want to do is they want to uh, destroy um, the people that you sell out to in order to have your trinkets and get put a uh, uh, your your master's degree on the wall or whatever, those people are actually uh, in the tank to destroy uh, humanity. And, and not just that, but the entire genome of all things. In fact, matter itself, or if you will, God's creation, meaning all things that were created, they seek to destroy if they can find that one magic trick to make it happen and that's whom humanity serves and that's when the civilization now i can tell you that if you the preponderance of humanity serves that that civilization will be destroyed and a new one will be birthed and that looks like what's happening here i don't know i think the the people i know that are awake i mean every, like all the musicians i deal with they're all awake okay uh, I know, you know, some kids I'm working with right now in, in music, they're awake. I know this rapper uh, guy that I'm working with, you know, Eduardo, he's awake. He's the AOD. I know, um, okay, so that's that's getting down to like 20. My daughter's age is, uh, is the AOD, he's like 23. This other band, they're like 30, 20, you know, 30, 32, 33. They're totally awake. Um, I mean, I don't know about all, but the guy I'm dealing with is, uh, uh, the people I know that are, um, the only people that don't, don't seem to be awake, ladies and gentlemen, are people my age. <laughs> they just don't want to give up on what they thought was the, the paradigm, you know, but young people are very, very much awake across the board and understand what I'm talking about and understand the two directions and understand that. That you know, uh, not to tout the band One Direction, <laughs> but there is only one direction, and that direction is truth. Because that will lead you to all good things. That truth is Christ. The other name for Jesus Christ is truth. The other name is I make all things new. Is his name. The idea that the new Jerusalem is new, but that's us. That's the finished work of the God creator in, in having created humanity. That's, that's where it all leads. You know, why are the, these souls must go through this situation on earth, such a scourge? Uh, you know, I think it's to build character. Uh, the ones who lose are the ones who are not intact in their bodies anymore, which is, is both a spiritual and physical thing, by the way. I've even seen kids when they when they when they passed through and they got their new soul, they were able to do supernatural things that they couldn't do a day before. And everyone is like, "Wow!" But you better keep your mouth shut. I'm like, "Keep your mouth. What for?" Because because the police are the witches, because uh, they run the whole thing. So you know, if you like those supernatural tricks you can do and this feeling of power and strength that you can do anything in this world. You better keep your mouth shut. And of course, you know what happens. Those people eventually get replaced by other young people coming up and they get pushed to the side, kicked to the curb. Now they got a real problem because they, they're not even intact in themselves. They know there's something wrong. If they could just get back to where they were when they were in high school, if they could just get back to where they were before they lost out, when they thought they were winning, they were losing. If they could just somehow, and I'm saying, yeah, basically pray, I, Lord, I know you're there. I know you're real. I know you made me. I know you, Jesus, are real. I know that you forgive sins. Uh, I just, I made a huge mistake. I'm sorry. I believe in you. I will lay down my life for you as you've laid your life down for me. I accept your, uh, the cross. I accept the, 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 your shed blood is the forgiveness of my sins has washed me clean. I'm washed in your blood, Jesus Christ. I will follow you all the days of my life and I'm never going to look back, but you're it for me. Please save me, Lord, in Jesus' name, whatever. You know, something along those lines. 
is basically uh, that's it. He'll take you. You receive the the only reason I can talk the way I do is because I have the Holy Spirit. There's, there'd be no other way. I could not. I, my thoughts would be jumbled. I would not be able to have a clear. Even when I try to ram, you know ramble and go off topic, and I'm, it always ends up being something because there's a spirit guiding it. That's the Lord God. Let that be the the the, the, the faith booster for you. Is the fact that the 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 Z man here could be all over the map. Something is keeping the hedge up. Something is keeping me going down the path to speak directly to you. It's not my talent. I could tell you that. I'd be all over the map and you'd just think I've got ADHD, ADD or whatever and that would be the end of it. <laughs> Indeed, I talk to people and I do go all over the map when I talk to them on the phone. It's like, look, can we just stay on one topic? <laughs> you know? I thought the original intent of the call was this, you know. And, uh, and guilty, you know, guilty, and you know, blame it on my ADD baby, you know, as, as the one band we like called AWOL Nation uh, has that as one of their tracks called Sale, and I think that's really their most popular one. But um, yeah, we like that a lot because I just think a lot of people that, that have given a lot of thought to all this stuff, you know, who are intellectual, like I'm an intellectual kind of by nature, I think a lot of us just have a ADD. That's why we're intellectuals, you know. It's 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 it, we're the last people that should be an intellectual, but it's the ADD people that be, become you know, the, uh, the 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 inventors and people like that, you know, that that forge new paths. It's because there's no hedge on them that they they're free to go where they want, right? God, it actually becomes a gift of the Lord to be uh, not able to paint inside the uh, the lines. To mix about fifty metaphors. So where the earth is going right now is, um, you know, I don't give much heed to the new world order, as I said, because I don't believe that they're going to get there. There is no such thing. I mean, even the elites aren't planning for a new world order. They're just planning for, um, you know, what they've always been planning for, which was like Fritz Lang's metropolis, you know, and, you know, robots. And, you know, the, 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 the girl in that, she becomes a robot. I, I, 1927, folks, 1927, Fritz Lang and his vision of, of, you know, it's always been the same, Elysium, same thing, same thing. You know, this is nothing new, okay? Uh, this, this idea of, H.G. Wells talked about this. This is nothing new. Oh, they talked about a world order and people are going to complain about it because the future does not really, their version of a future doesn't include us. I think you would all agree with that. Um, but our future does include us. The future that Yahweh made for us includes us very much. He loves us very much. And maybe, you know, we don't give him enough love. You know, that's the problem. But he loves us very much and, he, and he, he, he's on a mission. He's got a, a thing he's doing and he's going to complete it. And, um, you know, if you belong to him, you can kick and scream and go run and hide. But he's, you know, he's, you, somehow he's going to win and you're going to lose. And you're going to thank God you lost. Two ways you can go. But you can't go both. Okay, that's the other thing about this. The, the reason that you see American shambles is because at the pulpit they, uh, they agreed. And I don't know when they agreed, but at some point in time, you know, over the last however many years... They agreed that it was okay that um, the devil worshippers were Christians. You know, they infiltrated, if you will. And then they made it so that, you know, if you read the story Young Goodman Brown, the, 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 the preacher and the church and everything, they, their real allegiance is out in the woods in their groves, you know, where they have their rituals. I'm sorry, but this is nothing new. You know, and whether it's you take the Catholic Church and the fact that, you know, that's the... the, the the headquarters of Satan and, and whatever. It's, it's true. It's true. What the Bible says about that is true. Um, the Lord allowed the, uh, the devil to infiltrate and take over the Christian churches and all religions because, you know, otherwise the devil would not be the sovereign or the temporary sovereign, you know, on earth. And, and he certainly is. And, and you know, the greatest example of that is when when you know satan confronts jesus and says look i'll give you any of these kingdoms of the whole world all you gotta do is bow down to me meaning structurally that satan had 
all the institutions and all the powers upon the earth. You know, to try men's souls, to see what you're going to choose, to offer you an easy way on the one hand and a hard way on the other. But, you know, the eagles said take it easy, so that's who they're in the tank with. You know, Ringo Starr said, take it easy. You can even play them easy, he said. Whenever I hear that word easy in rock music, I, red flag, right? <laughs> uh, you know, it wasn't that rock stars were duped. It's really, you know, it's really the industry. And, you know, if you want to be one of those guys, you've got to, they, they, they cull for that kind of person. So they're going to keep culling. They don't care how good a musician you are. Yeah, you got to be good. But I mean, they don't, beyond that, there's a million, you know, millions of good guys, you know. So it's, that's not the point. The point is, who are you? And so they're looking for the one who fits what the paradigm is. And that's why they become the rock stars. And of course, they're going to write about what they feel is their successful life, which was giving themselves to the devil <clears throat> and, 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 and sharing the love and um, becoming part of the collective and whatnot. And then they take their chances. They have a one hit wonder. And then, you know, they're out in San Bernardino washing cars eventually and, you know, becoming a crack hose or something. But, you know, but all you saw was the limelight. You know, they played their part and they were thrown off the stage. And that's like 90% of the people that actually, quote, make it. And then there's like another maybe, you know, 5%, 10% that's kind of around, you know what I mean? And they're kind of withering on the vine. And then there's Ted Nugent, who, one of my favorites, he's totally conscious, totally with it. You know, I love him. Um, but uh, a lot of people don't share that love of... Uh, you know, he's he, he's a guy that's doing it on his his whole tour is being done by his people and his he's gonna be out he's gonna be here on uh the fourth of July in one of the casinos here. He's gonna be here I don't know when, but you know, I've i yeah, the, the the nuge. I uh definitely like his attitude. You know? And I you know, I why and, and that I guess he's kind of like in a way showing that that you know not the the rules don't apply to everyone you know god has his plan ultimately that trump satan and, and satan may be in charge of this and in charge of humanity for a time but the lord is sovereign over it all and and so that's why i know that if you heed him and you go with him that you know you may not get exactly what you thought you wanted but you will definitely get stuff and you will definitely have a life it's just not going to be the same life they have based on fear and, and, uh, and uh, fear of the other guy and fear of themselves and fear of being hurt and fear of this and fear of that. Their entire lifestyle is based on fear. You know, or people that forge, I know business people that forge ahead with, you know, God is their, their compass and they, they, go, they go their own way and they're working their own way. And uh, they continue to be successful. Because at the end of the day, they're answering to the Lord, not to, you know, not to their other people and to uh, people telling them how they should live. I mean, the greatest tragedy in the world is to, to live a life that you thought was you, only to find out, like Truman did in the Truman Show, that the life you led for 50 years wasn't even you. Like you wasted your life. It wasn't even you. It, it, it wasn't even what you look at your family and you look at your house and you look at it, it's like that's not where I want to live that's not the kind of girl I want to be with that's not the kind of kids I want that's not the job I ever want what not not one thing is is me not one thing it's all what I thought I should do it's all what I was programmed to do and that can be uh, a recipe for real regret in old age I mean you know really serious regret but even you oldsters, you know, the thing you got to do, like me, just bow down to the Lord and it'll be okay. Then your life all makes sense. It was all just a, a learning experience until you got to that point of breaking and then you gave your soul and life and heart and all of it to the Lord. And then he took you from there and you're cool, you're fine. Your life now suddenly has purpose and it was all for something. It all has meaning and God will now explain to you your people in your life, when you say, well, I don't know this wife, how do I get this house? How do I get this wife? Like the talking head song. 
And then all that will make sense now because the Lord will make it make sense. And so your whole life wouldn't have been a waste, you see. It's never too late. Let this be an encouraging word on the, on, on the Shabbat Shalom, the Sabbath. And um, I just, you know, there's just not much more I can say except for uh, I'd like to get back into uh, a little bit of, uh, if I can, get back to the psalm. I, I'd, I'd like to um, go to Psalm 23 just because, you know, I know you've heard it a million times, but I, I just can't help myself. So here I am, and I'm going to hit go. Go! I'm like a little iPod here. This is really amazing. Okay. Okay. So when we go to verse 5 of Psalm 23, it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now this is for all you people in business and all this stuff where you're worried about, gee, if I give my... I don't even want to talk to you. Are you going to prevaricate on that? If I give my soul to the Lord, well, I might get persecuted. Listen to this. So you people in business who are worried that you're going to wreck your business if you if you totally accept Jesus and publicly, you know, and, and well, don't worry. You go to your local church to be baptized. It'll be totally fake, okay? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over, meaning, um, meaning I have all the provision I need. And my head is anointed with oil, meaning I have the Holy Spirit. And that prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. The, your enemies are anybody that's not you, right? I mean, it's like, okay, so it's anybody that uh, is free, is your friend. And the people that are not free, the majority of people, uh, will look at you with, uh, that's where the persecution comes from. But there you are sitting there in the midst of your enemies, meaning the world, because you're now going the other way, because the Lord has paid for you, he redeemed you. And let the fun begin, right? So you're sitting there at your own table, the Lord has made, with provision, with a life, with everything, and they're just seething with anger. Now, he may allow you to have the gift of persecution, which means he wants to deepen your faith. You know, where they take your house and your wife and your thing, and they, what, they trump up charges, they throw you in jail, they do all kinds of things. You know, they torture you, they might kill you, whatever. But if you go with the um, fallen humanity, and the, uh, you will fall in the civilization of the fall and die, say, in the World War or whatever, you're going to die anyway. So there's really no reason not to be free, at least make sense out of this life before you leave. You know, uh, it doesn't make sense just being cowed into... Um, a civilization that is, is uh, at best a vapor at this point. Then it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's it. We're in the house of the Lord. When we're in Christ, we're in the house of the Lord. That's the house of worship. We're in there 24-7 wherever we go. They see the light coming out of you. They want to stamp it out. Sure. I mean, I get this on a daily basis. But now, I've been at this so long that it really doesn't bother me. I mean, I just, sometimes I start laughing when it gets kind of obvious. But, you know, most of the time, you know, there's a four. You feel it. You definitely feel the vibe. You know, you feel it. The disapproval, the whatever. But it's usually just because you can do and say what you want. You know, or they might know, like in my case, me from the internet or whatever, and they know I'm going to say and do what I want. I'm I'm not going to um, hold, you know, uh, mince words here. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on. I'm going to tell you exactly the truth, and that I'm going to, you know, do it again another day, and I'm going to do it again another day, and some of it's going to be tailored for what's going on right now. But um, you know that they can't stand. They have to have like official churches and houses of worship, you know, um, that will be the official place you go to, 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 you know, just like the, the official Chinese churches are not to be confused with the underground. You know, this, this voice, my voice comes from the underground. Uh, their voice is above ground. Um, 
And to Zephaniah, the Lord said, I will consume man and beast, I will consume the fowls of the heaven, and the fishes of the sea, and the stubbly blocks with the wicked. I will cut off man from the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, and the name of the uh, uh, Chemarim, the Chemarims with the priest, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship that, uh, the, and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm, and them that are, are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for him. Well, that's really sad. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand, for the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. And I think that's kind of where we are in life today. As it was in the Old Testament, in the time of Zephaniah, I believe it's, it is today. The Lord has uh, cut off, you know, the, uh, the false, divided the sheep. He's, he's, in, he's embraced his remnant. He has said, I am the Lord, and I'm going to bring this to a conclusion um, and I believe we're, we're heading toward an end of not just, you know, not, it has, it's not just the West, but it's the global order, if you will, and there's nothing to replace it. So I will cut off man from his plans. I will cut off man from his churches. I will cut off man from his religions in general. And um, I will, will upend any sense of order with chaos. And on that day, you know, some very severe things will occur. You know, mark this as the end of a civilization or the end of the Lord's blessing. Um, you know, we all very much feel that, but I'm trying to put it in context where, you know, it's, 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 because uh, there's so many people that are kind of in the prophetic walk and they get mixed up with conspiracy theory and they get totally consumed with fear. And if you have fear, if you're fear based, you can't know the goodness of God. It has to, you have to have the courage to let the fear go. You can't do that without faith. You can't do that without the intervention of the Holy Spirit and the Lord and the comfort that he brings. Without that, you can't look at this thing because you're going to feel like, oh, it's so awful, I feel so bad. I, oh, gee, now the, no happiness ever. It's just every day is just hard. And these people are destroying everything and I, I have no future and this is just terrible. And that's where most people that follow conspiracy theories wind up, just like that. But I know so many people of faith who also have wound up there because they drop their faith in favor of their own logic. And this, this doesn't, the, where the creation is going is not logical. God not only honors his creation, but it's going to be lifted up in future days, not put down. How, I don't know. And with that, I'm going to leave you with that. And uh, as I said before, I'm, well, this is a good one. And in Jesus' name, I bid you shalom.